Okay, today we're taking a look at test A in our review book, parts two, three, and four, um, the short response and, and extended response answers. Um, before we get started, I just want to point out the directions that are at the top, okay, of this part of the regions. You're going to answer all eight questions in this section. These are worth two points apiece, because you can see 16 points total here. Eight questions, two points each. Okay, each correct answer will receive two points. Clearly indicate the necessary steps, including appropriate formula, substitutions, diagrams, graphs, charts, etc. So they're referring to like tables of values and so on. For all questions in this part, a correct numerical answer with no work shown will receive half credit of one point. All answers should be written in pen, and of course we'll talk more about that later, except for your graphs and drawings, which should be done in pencil. Okay, okay. So looking at number 25, this was pretty basic. They wanted us to draw the graph of this square root function. Um, we know with a square root function, okay, remember the parent function starts right here at the origin and it can't come back, the bottom of it can't come over here, you would get errors because you can't take the square root of a negative x value. Okay, this minus 1 on the end, we know from our transformations, moves it down 1. So before I even make my table of values, <coughs> excuse me, or um, start plotting this, I know that this is going to come down 1 and go from here. So I already have an idea what it's going to look like. Okay, um, so you make your table of values. As you know, you're going to go to your graphing calculator and type that in. You just have to be careful. Common mistake is that this minus 1 stays under here. Okay, that's not at all what you want. So you have to be careful when you're putting it into the calculator and make sure that it looks exactly like you want it to. Notice, this is unusual, but notice they did not put a scale. Usually on the regions they do, but notice that I've added that to the problem. Um, my table of values before an x value is 0, you would be getting an error here. And that's fine. You could put one of those points on there. Remember, we want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at least. I know I can't graph that, okay? but I have my 5 points. Um, I go over and I graph it. I label it. And I notice when I graded yours, we were missing arrows. Okay? There's no restricted domain here. So you need to make sure you have arrows. Okay. That was it for number 25. On number 26, pretty basic problem. They're giving you a formula right here, exponential formula, OK? So what you have is this would be our y equals a times b to the x power. OK, they're using t instead of x, and th that's fine. And they want you to explain what the 0.5 and the 300 represent. Now, 300 is our initial amount or our starting amount. We know that our A value is always that. Some of you said that this is how much there is of the substance, and I just put when. Like you're not being specific enough. Remember the details. When is it? It's not the amount at the end, it's the amount at the beginning. Now, your 0.5 is your rate of decay or your half life. Okay, there's no need to turn this into a percentage. This is not an exponential growth or decay where we came from a rate or a percentage. Um, what we have here is because it's being cut in half, then that's why our base is a 0.5. So, for example, if we were doubling, our base would be a 2. This is all you needed for your two points, but it's really easy if you're not specific with your details to lose points here. Very simple question. Okay, should be getting your two uh, full points. Okay, in number 28, it can be as simple as this. What I wrote here, let me check below. Okay, I'll look down there after. The vertex of a parabola has the coordinates of 2, negative 1. You know me, I'm a visual person, so on the graph, I plotted this point, as you can see right here, and I labeled it f of x. So I know that's the vertex of f of x. You could also put this into your graphing calculator. Find the coordinates of the vertex defined by g of x. So g of x is going to be your transformation. 
okay? And what this is going to do here with this minus 2 on the inside of the parentheses, that's our left or right movement on the graph. So this function is going to move two units to the right. So if you go down to your graph, if you're right here, two units to the right, now your vertex is going to be at 4, negative 1. Okay, so it can be that simple. I mean, you could make your entire graph, your entire quadratic functions on here if you wanted, but really it's just the vertex points that you need to look at, or you could also look on your graphing calculator. Okay, explain how you arrived at your answer. Okay, this would suffice for your explanation. Okay, or I could write it in a complete sentence. Okay, the vertex point moves two units to the right. Um, some of you tried to sub this into here, and you can do that. What you can do is say f of x minus 2 is equal to, now you got up here you got x squared minus 4x plus 3. Well, in place of x, you can put x minus 2 squared minus 4 times x minus 2 plus 3. You can do that. Okay, and then you just have to do the math here. You got to be careful because remember, when you square this, you repeat it twice, and then you've got minus 4x plus 8 plus 3. Okay, and then you can work this out to get x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 4x plus 8 plus 3. So what do we get? We get x squared, we get minus 8x plus 12 plus 15. So this is the uh, g of x. This is the function rule for the transformation. Then you could put that into your graphing calculator and you could find your vertex. Okay, a lot more work, a lot more chance of making a mistake, but you can do it. Okay? Just remember, with these two-point questions, they're pretty down and dirty. They're not like meant to be really long and involved. Okay, number 29. On the set of axes below, draw the graph of this equation. Remember, whenever you graph, you have to show a method of graphing. So I chose m equals b equals because it's a linear function. Okay? Or you could have made a table of values, whatever you prefer. Again, had to establish a scale. Okay? I began at 3 on the y-axis. A slope of negative 3 fourths, I went down 3 and right 4, and I did that one more time. And of course, I used my ruler, okay? I don't expect your lines to look like something that a preschool child drew for us, okay? You're insulting your intelligence and how smart you look to somebody grading your test. Like they're thinking, really? They're that lazy? They can't use a ruler? They don't want their work to look nice? Okay, it's a reflection of you. Please make it look nice. Okay? And then, of course, I have to label my rule. Uh, excuse me, my function. My linear function. With my rule. Okay. Then I'm going to go down here and it says, is the point 3, 2 a solution to the equation? Explain your answer based on the graph. So that means you don't need to do it algebraically. That's not what they're looking for. You can, as a backup, to check it, um, but that's not what they're going to grade you on. If that's all you do, you will not get credit for it, even though it proves to you whether it's a solution or not. It's not what they asked for. Okay. So when they say based on the graph, they just want you to look and see, is the point 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, which is right there, is it a point on the line? And no, it is not. Okay, so there's my explanation, and I also could have said no and then shown it in the table of values, which represents the points on the graph. Okay, moving on to number 30. The function f has a domain value, so these are our x values, and a range value of 2, 4, and 6. Could f be represented by these ordered pairs. Justify your answer. That means prove it, explain it. It's really simple. Yes, because there are no repeats in the domain. You can have a function, okay, whenever you have no repeats in your domain. What several of you tried to do was explain why it was not a linear function. It says nothing up here about what type of function it has to be. 
okay, linear or nonlinear, that doesn't matter. Some of you went through and figured out the slope and said that point can't work because the x's are going up by 2, so that worked, but the y's are going up by 2, and you said this should be 7, 8. Yeah, if it's a linear function, this is not, it does not say that's what this is. Okay? So you don't want to do that. Keep it simple. Is this a function, yes or no? Are there repeats in the domain? Okay, and we know the y values can repeat, so that's not an issue. What happened to number 30? One. Oh, hiding down here. Okay, the last of the two-point questions. Factor this expression completely. Whenever they say completely, that means you factor more than once. Okay? You know from the Unit 5, you can look on your study card, these are the three questions we ask ourselves when we are factoring. Do we have a greatest common factor? We did not. Do we have trinomials that can be factored? We do, okay? So this factored into these two binomials. Don't forget smiley faces would check that. On the inside, you would get 7x squared. On the outside, you get negative x squared. That gives you your middle term of 6x squared, okay? And then you look at it and you say, okay, now that you've factored this, you have two binomials, so now you're here. When you have binomials, you ask yourself, is are either of them dots? Well, to be dots, difference of two squares, you have to have a minus sign. So this cannot be a dots. Okay, so we bring that down because that is one of the factors that we have to multiply by to get back to this trinomial. Okay, so this is a dots because x squared and 1 are both perfect squares. So when you factor a dots, Okay, your factors look identical except for one is positive and one is negative. One is the sum, one is the difference. Now if you took these three factors and multiplied them together, you will get back to your original trinomial. Okay, what several of you tried to do, um, you thought you tried to use completing the square, quadratic formula. Okay, first of all, this is not a quadratic equation. It's to the fourth power, not the second power. Right there, that shuts you down. You cannot solve it as if it's a quadratic. However, um, what you did try to do, some of you, you put like equals zero, and then, as I said, you tried to solve it as a quadratic, okay? But um, that's not what this says. This does not say solve. It says to factor details. You have to pay attention to the details. Okay, next part. Number 32, you can skip over this right now because this is not a problem that we have worked on. Okay, going to number 33. Now we are into part three of the test. There are four questions totaling 16 points, so these are worth four points apiece. Write an equation. Okay, so I need to end up with an equation, hence the equal sign. That defines m of x as a trinomial where it is equal to these two binomials multiplied together plus 4x squared plus 19. Okay, so this is pretty self-explanatory. You can look through and see the products that I obtained when I multiplied. Okay, here are these first four terms and then adding on these two at the end, I ended up with this nice trinomial. Remember, they want you to write an equation not an expression. So an equation, you need an equal sign, you need m of x equals here. Okay. Some of you, I think, had 8x here in the middle. You'll have to check it out, look at my work, and see what your error was. Now, this is a deal. When you get into the four-point questions, there's like a part one, part two, usually, to the question. If you don't have your answer correct on the top part, obviously you can't get your answer correct on the bottom. So you need to be very careful. Solve. We're going to solve. We're not going to factor this time. We're going to solve 4x when m of x equals 0. That means when y equals 0. So we're going to take our answer from above. We're going to set it equal to 0. And we do have a quadratic equation because it's to the second degree. We're going to, I chose to solve it by factoring. Easiest way. 
I could use completing the square as well, and I could use the quadratic formula, but factoring is really the quickest way. Okay, so here are my two factors, and then I set each factor equal to zero, and then I solve by doing the opposite and moving those numbers to the other side. Really easy four-point question. You just have to be careful of your details. Okay, number 34, we've done this problem before. It was right in your notes, okay? If you bothered to go back to this unit and look it up, you could have just copied it all down, okay? So we've done this type of problem more than once, but this one specifically once before. So you needed to know your length and your width to be able to find the area of this um, garden and walkway around it. So we've got x, we've got 16, we've got x, x. 12x. So you can see what your length and your width are. Okay? Then they want you to write an equation that can be used to find the unknown, which is x. So multiplying your length by your width, it's going to equal the area they gave you of 396. Some of you didn't even write an equation. Okay? You wrote an expression and didn't know what to do. You need to read for details, please. Okay, describe it. Oh, God, guys, we did a couple of these, and these were not that good. All you have to do is describe what you wrote. Why did you write this equation? Because you knew that the length times the width equaled the area. Okay, very, very simple. You do not want to lose points for that. Down at the end, determine and state the width of the walkway in meters. So, of course, you're going to label it in meters. So... You are going to multiply these out, and then you notice you have a second degree equation, which is a quadratic. So we have three ways to solve that. Um, but before we can solve it, we need to get it into standard form. We were not too good at that. Okay, we need to move that over here so it's equal to zero. Once you're equal to zero, then you can go ahead and solve it. So I get to that point, and I'm thinking, okay, do I want to factor? Do I want to use completing the square or quadratic formula? Well, completing the square, I need to get rid of this 4 if I want to use that, which I look through and say, oh, do I have a greatest common factor of 4? Can I take 4 out of all of these? And I can. So I take 4 out, divide everything by 4 each term. This is what I'm left with. So now I can factor this trinomial, or I could use completing the square, but... Again, I think factoring is much easier. So I go through and I factor it. Remember to set each factor equal to 0. Okay, This factor goes away because 4 cannot equal 0. And then right here, when I solve each of these, I end up with one of my answers being negative. We know that the length or the width cannot be negative, so you need to reject that. And you don't just cross it out, because it looks like not equal. You must say reject to get credit for that. So it tells me x equals 3. They want the width of the walkway. Let's go back up here. It tells right in the problem, okay, that, let's see, right there. Okay, they have a walkway installed around the garden with a width of x meters. X is what they're asking for. They wanted you to solve for X. So that means the width of the walkway, X is equal to 3 meters. What some of you did is you had the right answer, and then you found the width of the walkway and the garden. Okay, that's not what they're looking for, and they're showing you right here where the walkway is. So be careful with that, please. Okay, number 35, this was a sequence problem. Um, if you wanted to treat it that way, you didn't have to. I think there's a lot more work here, and there's a big chance to make errors, which some of you did, okay? All I did is I looked at it. I know they, re they refer to it as a sequence, so that's why you tried to do that or a pattern. Um, when you look at it, they tell you that you're starting with $175 on your card, so that's your y-intercept, and that it decreases $2.75 each time. So that is going to be your slope or your rate of change, and you could go right to here. Okay? If you use the arithmetic formula, because you're decreasing by $2.75 each time, that's fine, but you can clearly see that there is much more work here. 
the trick to it is the A1 value is not 175. Okay, the first term is not. If you look at the table of values for this, what you have to do is go to your zero term, okay, which is actually 172.25. Okay, so that is tricky. Some of you used 175, it didn't work out, and that's why. Okay, if you can just, I think this is just easier to do. Okay, so then you take it and you solve it. You want to know when is the card going to have a balance of zero? Okay, well, when you solve it, you find out it's 63.63 weeks. Okay, but obviously they want to know. They want you to explain how you arrived at your answer, and they want to know how many weeks in a row she can afford to rent. Well, she can afford to rent for the full 63 weeks. There's not enough for the 64th week. Okay, and that is what I have said here in my explanation. Um, I answered the question, and then I explained what I did. Okay, um, and some of you just took, I think, the 175 and divided by the 275, and that would work as well to give you 63.63, because I do not believe they said it had to be solved algebraically. They did not. Okay, they did not say it had to be solved algebraically. Okay, moving on to the next one. On number 36, we have done this problem before, folks. Unit 4, systems of equations. Okay, when they are talking about two unknowns, then you're going to have two let statements and you'll end up with two equations by the time you get to the bottom. So here they just asked you to write your first equation and you did well with that. Um, several people did not have let statements. Please add those to your paper. The next part, they wanted to know if there were eight cats and 14 dogs at the shelter, would that be possible? Use your equation to justify your answer. So you're just using the equation from above. You're subbing in the 8 and the 14, okay? And you got, some of you got down to this point, okay? You got down to here and you stopped and you said no. Or you didn't say no and you just stopped, okay? You need to take it to the next line where you are clearly showing me, clearly showing the steps, okay, to get full credit. So these do not equal, you must say not equal, and answer no or not possible to get full credit for that section. Okay, and then usually you're good to there, and then you get to the bottom and you're not always sure what you need to do. Um, in this last part, they gave you more information and you had to write another equation. They said that there were t a total of 22 cats and dogs, so I could write this equation. I chose to then transform it so that I could use the substitution method. So I said that C is equal to 22 minus D. So I took my original equation from the top at part one and everywhere there was a C, I subbed in 22 minus D, which is actually only in one place there. And then I did the math, solved my equation and found out that there were 12 dogs, okay? But then they needed to know how many cats there were. So I subbed in, I said, well, cats is 22 minus the dogs, and we ended up with 10. Again, this problem is right in your notes. We've done it before. Okay, last problem, number 37. This is our final problem, and it's a six-pointer. It's usually a doozy, although this one isn't bad because we've already done this. We did it in our notes. I think it was in our classwork, and um, you guys actually did a great job with it. Okay, so just being careful, we already spoke about all this, but make sure you're careful of all the details in the problem. Okay, they asked you to label. Hate to see you miss a problem for not labeling. Tables of values, okay, for your graphing. Make a nice graph, use rulers, make it all good. Okay, we're gonna move down to here. And then we got to go to the next page for the rest of the answers. I'm just going to display them. I'm not going to talk about them because we have already done that. Okay, so you can see what those are in case you need to look at them. Um, I wouldn't do, you know, we talked about in class, we just did this from the graph. Okay, you can do it algebraically, which is what that is. But hey, who's going to go through all that? You might make mistakes. I would not recommend it. I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, and explain 
you need to be underlining these words when you read the directions to make sure that you do, you know, complete all the parts of the problem so you can get your full credit. And then, of course, we did this part down here. You could get that rate from the graph, okay? I'm also showing you algebraically how to get that. Again, you could get that from your table of values. You could show a table of values, okay? They just say to justify. Justify can be a combination of showing work and explaining, okay? I had to answer the question, and then this is my justification here and here algebraically. Again, could have shown the table of values, or I could have written about it and said I looked at the graph, and this is what happened. Okay, I hope you did well on this exam.